it's time for today's challenge. Say farewell to the original trilogy. It's time to take a trip back to Camp Wawanakwa to talk about the sins of the next generation of Total Drama Campers. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is every Total Drama Revenge of the Island character's worst deed. Today we got a couple of characters who belong in a new category. These characters are the innocent, that is, the ones who lack any noticeably bad deeds. First is a man who never says a word, B, also known as Beverly. Good old B is the definition of the strong, silent type. Think Ferb from Phineas and Ferb, just on a larger scale. Given that he doesn't say a single word, all we really have on B is his actions, which consists thankfully of general helpfulness towards his fellow campers. If Cam has the book smarts, B has the street smarts, able to use practical knowledge to improvise a solution no matter what problems lie in front of him and his team. When he's eliminated, he seems ready to talk and possibly warn his teammates of Scott's manipulation, but is cut off by the launching of his catapult. Time's up. <laughs> there's not much to say about him, but that also means there's nothing bad to say about him either, so this true neutral inventor takes the most pure spot on our list. The only crime is how early he was eliminated. Speaking of, you all knew that Dawn would be pretty darn early on this list. Or should we say, pretty Dawn early. Alright, get that mouse off that unsubscribe button, come on. Like with B, there's nothing truly bad we can say about Dawn. Her intentions are pure, and while her strange ability to read the auras of others around her could definitely be used for darker purposes, she uses it for good, often becoming a pseudo-therapist to her fellow contestants and always doing her best to be kind to everyone. She's also got that Disney princess-esque friend to all the woodland creatures thing going on. She was too good for this show, man. Now, let's get started with the flawed deeds. He may be the sharpest member of the new cast, but he's not invincible. Cameron's worst deed is being manipulated. For such a smart guy, Cameron is a pushover. It's hard to fault him too much for that, since a butterfly is enough to literally push him over. That said, it doesn't change the fact that Cameron often finds himself being used as a pawn by stronger, more manipulative contestants. Contestants. He's practically Joe's manservant in Revenge of the Island, bending to her will any time she commands him to. This leads to him trying, but failing, to sabotage Lightning per her request, even though Lightning and him had been pretty friendly up to that point. He doesn't have a malicious bone in his body, but a brain that big is pretty dangerous in the wrong hands, even if indirectly so. Now we have Sam's worst deed, Total Masochism. For the first time in this video, we're gonna head over to Total Drama All-Stars. Sam is one of the contestants who makes a return from the previous season, but for a very unique reason. He wants to become a mutant like his girlfriend, Dakota, back home. While this is kinda sweet in its own weird way, he ends up throwing challenges for his team, as he's much more concerned with getting on the same physical level of his mutant lover. That said, Sam also falls into the category of campers who are consistently kind people, so we won't place him any higher for this weird indirect method of sabotage. Next, we got Dakota, whose worst deed is her sense of entitlement. Dakota is one of the few contestants who cares about fame over money. And considering how loaded she is already, believe us, she really cares about fame. At her worst, she can be pretty snobby and condescending, and when she's brought back to the show as an assistant to Chris, she takes little issue with following his orders, however harmful they might be. But honestly, Dakota never really does anything bad, per se. She actually turns out to be sweet by the end of the day, and her snobby attitude is just one aspect of a surprisingly more complex character. It may not sound like much, but being more than skin deep is rare for a total drama contestant, so we'll keep her at a modest place on our list. Now for Zoe's worst deed, Commando Zoe. You guys know that one now ironic meme that says, when the nice guy loses his patience, the devil shivers. Yeah, Commando Zoe is like that, but totally sincere. Zoe is a sweetheart, and she had every reason to be ticked off at how Scott did Mike so dirty near the end of the season, and how Chef literally pushed her off a freaking cliff. That was also kind of mean. With that being said, it's still worth noting just how much of a borderline villain arc she went on. She could have been worse, as she did have concern for Cameron, but her aggression during this mini arc was still a sight to behold. Revenge is never the answer, but it isn't necessarily not the answer in this context. Tricking Scott wasn't a good thing to do, but it's hard to deny he had it coming. Also, even she couldn't resist laughing at Scott in the trauma chair, which is kinda messed up to be honest. Alrighty, Stacy's worst deed is compulsive lying. Okay, sure, it's not totally confirmed whether or not she's lying. Technically, for all we actually know, everything she says could be the whole truth. Catapult went into my mic. 
great, 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 great. Beth wasn't lying about her supermodel boyfriend after all, but come on, it's highly unlikely she's telling the truth. And even if she is, she lacks the social awareness to tell that she's agitating everyone with her constant anecdotes nobody asked for. Her getting eliminated first was one of the best writing decisions in this entire series. We do kind of feel bad for her going bald, though. Now, before we delve into the most infamous characters, let's take a quick detour to the really bad deeds. We feel weird placing him so low on this list, but Brick's worst deed is leaving his friends behind. Brick might be the most overtly good character in Revenge of the Island. Although flawed, he's done arguably more good deeds than any of the others and shows willingness to put his own safety on the line for that of his comrades. But sadly, that doesn't excuse this event. Brick is accustomed to a militaristic lifestyle, and as a result, he has trouble acting on his own values rather than simply following orders. This results in Brick leaving several of his friends behind during the challenge in Finder's Creepers, when Joe orders him to finish the challenge instead of going back to help them. To his credit, Brick rightfully feels remorse, volunteering to be eliminated for his cowardice. I don't deserve to stay. I did not follow my own code. He even makes up for it later when he inadvertently sacrifices his team's win and by extension, his chance at the million to save Cameron, Zoe, and Mike. We have to place him higher than expected, considering that, unlike Cameron, Brick did have at least some chance of saying no to Joe's selfish demands without facing physical retaliation. At the very least, he could defend himself against it. To make matters worse, he could have easily let his comrades die in this context, due to them being endangered by what everyone thought to be a huge spider. And honestly, Izzy isn't that much safer. You're a good guy, Brick, but just following orders only go so far. She may have glamorous hair, but that doesn't excuse Anne Maria's worst deed, multiple counts of physical assault. Interestingly, despite everything about her character being coded to say otherwise, Anne Maria isn't particularly antagonistic throughout the season. At worst, she's rude and hot-headed. But let us tell you, that hairspray is flammable. She'll attack anyone who so much as annoys her, let alone if they threaten to mess up her hair. Don't touch the hair. Whether it's a punch to the face or spraying them with hairspray, those chemicals hurt. And while she never really falls into malicious territory, Anne Maria never really shows a significant change in character. That's exactly why she lands this low. You could argue that some of the earlier deeds are worse on their own, but her attacks and rudeness towards others are pretty consistent. She's just tame enough to avoid our final section. These are the truly terrible deeds. First in this category is Scott's worst deed, being a schemer. Yeah, not really sure how else to word it. Scott isn't as underhanded and calculating as Heather or Alejandro before him. He's willing to trick others and even lie to get them eliminated, including his own teammates. Anything goes if it gets him closer to a win. Why isn't he higher? Well, while Scott doesn't really have a lot of particularly good qualities, he's also, believe it or not, the least violent in this final category by a decent margin. He's the most outwardly mean of the bunch, sure, and his constant scheming to sabotage other contestants definitely cements his status as a main antagonist. No way we can win. Winning will ruin my plan. But in terms of individual deeds, it definitely gets worse than him, and he actually grows as a person being one of the few characters who doesn't totally regress in All-Stars. Side note, but did his trauma chair give anyone else their own trauma chair as a kid? Like, Jesus man, I know he was mean, but come on. Next is the season's other main villain, Joe, whose worst deed is taking advantage of others particularly Cameron, who she uses as a manservant throughout the season. Joe has no problem using violence, threats, and verbal abuse to make others do what she wants. This is obvious in the episode Up, Up, and Away in My Pitiful Balloon, where he forces him to build her own vehicle and even to sabotage Lightning, who she betrayed, mind you. To her credit, she does show some respect for Cameron's ability to stand up to her and get her eliminated. She's more violent and manipulative than Scott, which is why she's higher. The bronze medal of evil goes to a character who isn't all that bad. Sha Lightning's worst deed is taking Cameron to the finals. Lightning might be remembered best for his brutal rivalry with Cameron in the finale. Thinking Cameron had betrayed him by unintentionally stealing his win in the previous challenge, he decides to choose him as his final opponent, believing he'll be easy and thinking he'll be able to absolutely crush him. To his credit, Lightning was actually pretty decent to Cameron throughout most of the season. Not only did he save him from drowning in the first episode, but he even encouraged in the stand up to Joe. It's a shame things fell off so hard at this point, turning Lightning from an arrogant but usually chill jock 
into a bullying menace. It's a huge blemish on the record of a character who was actually way nicer than we remembered. Still, at least, we know that he doesn't judge. The silver medal of evil goes to, uh, Mike's worst deed. Mal. Remember all the antagonists from other Total Drama seasons and how much chaos they caused? Alejandro, Heather, even Scott in Season 4? Well, enter All Stars, which introduced Mike's evil secret personality, Mal. From now on, this brain is under new management. Who magically turns this absolute twig of a man into someone who can easily crush Alejandro's wrist. No disrespect to anyone who enjoyed the Mal plotline, but this guy was a menace and one of the very few contestants whose level of violence made him willing to attempt murder on occasion. He even lets Cameron fall off a cliff at one point, forcing him back into his bubble for a time, and might have killed him if he got the chance. We're not really sure if it's ethical to count Mal as a deed on Mike's end, but come on, it's clear nobody writing this guy knew anything about how did actually works. You might be wondering, how can anyone beat him? Well, technically, this next character isn't actually a contestant, but we're giving the gold medal of evil to Fang's worst deed, mutilating Scott. Man, don't you hate it when you're trying to eat someone and they have the nerve, the audacity, the chicanery to break your tooth by accident when they're trying to escape? Now, first of all, dude, you have like hundreds of teeth. Do you really have nothing better to do? As a shark with legs who can explore both land and sea, that you have to devote your entire life to hunting down your former snack for revenge? Considering that Fang has the ability to walk and even think similarly to a human, it's not unreasonable to think that he could just go to a dentist. Everyone says, Heather this, Alejandro that, but Fang is a villain who puts them to shame. We mentioned earlier what he did to Scott, and it was done during their ride together on the catapult, which, mind you, implies that he was smart enough to arrange a ride with Scott when he got eliminated. This man might have intimidated Chris McLean. Let that sink in. Fang is a menace, and even after getting his revenge, he's still going after Scott at every turn. If you're ever having a bad day, just remember, you at least don't have a two-legged shark stalking you. Dude is never gonna watch Finding Nemo again. But you're in our thoughts and prayers, Scott.